When you first become a flashlight enthusiast, the question becomes, what charger do I buy to start out with? And if somebody asks me the question of what's the best charger, I might say the SkyRC MC3000, but it's over $100. If you wanna see their view about this excellent charger, you can click above here. But if you're saying, what's a good mid-range charger, then I might say the Mi Boxer C412. We've even got this SC1 Plus, which will do 26800 battery cells. We got the venerable Xtar VC4 Plus. These are all excellent chargers, but when I recommend them, often people say, yeah, but do you have something a little less expensive? Today, I bring you a low-cost charger with excellent features, the EBL IntelCharger PD4. Welcome back to Shoe Lights. As I said in my intro, I've got a ton of chargers that satisfy different needs that I have. When EBL contacted me and asked me if I wanted to review a charger, honestly, I was a little like, no, no, I'm good. I, I have a lot of chargers, I'm fine. But then what caught my eye was that this is the least expensive charger I've reviewed to date that has the best features. So let's take a look at its capabilities, which are numerous, and let's take a look at its limitations because there are some with it being such a low cost charger. So how low cost is it? Well, right now on Amazon, it's about $25 with a $3 coupon. So you're looking at just a little over $20 for this charger. That is really low cost for a four bay charger. So what do you get for $25? What comes in the box? So you get a box like this, you get the charger itself, you get its charging cord, but what you do not get is a charging block. When I say charging block, I mean something like this that you're gonna plug that cord into. So this is an excellent charger to get if you already have a lot of charging blocks hanging around, but you do wanna make sure that you get a very good one. Like this, let me focus on it, this Qualcomm, quick charge 3.0 block. This would be excellent. I looked on Amazon just now and I found that you could buy two of these for about $5 each. So it was $10 for two. And so it's not a huge cost, but you want to make sure you get one of these because if the charger doesn't negotiate well with the charging protocol in the block, you may not get the fast two amp charging mode that's available on this EBL. It has the ability to charge all four bays at once and up to two amps. Now I say up to because you're limited to one bay charging at two amps at a time. And when you're charging two bays at once, you can do one amp each. And when you're doing four bays at once, you're gonna get half an amp each. So really think about this as a two amp total charger. And if you put extra cells in there, you're kind of just shaving off from that two amps total. I actually don't mind that so much because charging your battery slower is better for their health. And if you want the option to charge at two amps, just throw your cell in bay four. Bay four is the bay that does two amps. The bays that do one amp are one and four, and then all of them will do half an amp or a quarter amp. So this charger will basically handle practically any type of rechargeable battery you can throw at it. For example, it'll handle up to a 21700 and right there, no problem. 18650, 18350, 14500. Okay, let's take this one out. It'll handle the 10440s. These are little tiny guys. Now, like most chargers, you kind of have to hold them up a little bit from the bottom of the plastic and then they make connection. That's pretty standard. That's almost every charger I have, including the expensive Sky RC MC3000 does that. But here's a really great feature. Notice how all of these right now are responding as lithium ion 4.2 volts. It knows that. Okay, great. What happens if I take an on a loop? Throw it in here. All right, let's do that. Oh, look at that. It knows Bay 4 is nickel metal hydride, which on a loop is that chemistry. It's just a proprietary version of it. Let's take a different type of nickel metal hydride. This is a Lenmar ready to go. I'll throw it in there. And there you go, nickel metal hydride. Now notice it says Bay 4 is nickel metal hydride. It still knows that these are lithium ion. If I change the slot to slot two, for example, you can see it says lithium ion 4.2 volts. Oh, and I just noticed that slot one is not connecting. Hang on one second. 
Let me just, this is a flat top. Oh, no, that's a great little mistake I just made. I actually had this in backwards. So there is reverse polarity protection. If I put it in the correct way like this, you can see it reads as lithium ion. Now I wanna point out that this charger has a couple limitations. One is that it charges up to a 21700 cell, but it will not do a 21700 that is maybe protected or maybe a button top. So for example, I've got this very long 21700 out of a flashlight that has a charging circuit in it and protection and a button top. So this is a really long battery. And you can see that when I hold it like this, that it is from basically this blue line taller. Well, this does not fit. I cannot all the way down, I cannot shove it in. That's kind of standard to be honest. I mean, a lot of chargers don't fit protected 21700s. My really, really expensive Sky RC does not fit. Oh, that's the wrong cell. Does not fit protected. See, doesn't fit, okay? So that's a pretty standard thing for a lot of chargers. One other minor thing, and I don't think this is a problem, but I just pointed out, this is a very low cost charger, and as such, it does not have thermal protection. Notice that this XTAR VC Plus also doesn't have thermal protection. How can you tell? There is no thermal sensors in the bays to check temperatures. Now, thermal protection looks like this. You see these little kind of metal parts right there. And basically what happens is, when a cell is in here charging, it is sensing the temperature on that plate. Now, is this a big deal? Let me tell you that in the history of me charging cells, it has never been a deal for me until last week. And here's what happened. I had a flashlight shipped to me. I thought it had a rechargeable 16340 in it, but really it had a CR123 lithium battery in it. Dumb mistake. It said all over the cell not to recharge it, but I just didn't read it and I threw it in the charger. When I went to check it, on the display it said battery cut off, and then the reason was because it read heat in the cell because the cell was being charged and it shouldn't have. Now, I had it in my Sky RC, which has temperature sensors, and so it saved the day. If I had had it in a XTAR or an EBL like this without temperature sensors, it might have charged and blown up, like it ruptured. This is a feature I've never needed until last week in years, and it's just because I was negligent. It's because I took a cell that clearly said not to charge it, and I put it in a charger. So, you know, listen, if you want that protection, then you're gonna have to step up to something like this, and these are 50 bucks and higher. So if you want a low-cost charger, I suggest you go with something like the EBL Intellicharger PD4 and just read your cells carefully. Now let's head into the UI. So we're gonna get a good focus on the UI here as I walk through it. So I just threw a battery in there and notice it's auto sensing, detected its voltage, its percentage, and it's automatically set it to half an amp. Now if you wanna set that to higher, just press and hold the mode button here until it flashes and amps appears. Then click mode and you can go to one amp, click again, you can go to two amps. Now, how do I know that this thing is really charging at two amps? I'm back at half an amp, and you can see that with this battery in at half an amp, you can see I'm pulling half an amp right there in the middle, well, 0.46. Now, if I press and hold to get the current setting to highlight, and I click through, you can see as soon as I go to one, we're now at one amp, or 0.92. And when I go to two, you can see it we're at 1.92 amps. Now, if you put two batteries in, so let's put a battery in bay four, remember it's going to max out at two amps total, so these will both be at one amp now. So let's double check what's happening. Now notice right here, there's an icon that bay four is selected. So anything that's displayed here is talking about bay four. So when I press and hold to go into the current change, you can see I was at half an amp here. I'll now set it to one amp. And when I just wait, it's going to select and lock in, 
And now I'm charging one amp here. Now let's go see what bay one's doing. So I will choose the slot button. I'm now selected C1 there. And you can see that I'm at one quarter of an amp, which is what I had selected before. So let's press and hold mode. And let's click through. And you'll see that one amp is the highest I can go. So let's go back to it. And I'll wait. And you'll see that um, even though it's not locked in yet, you can see it's immediately doing two amps total for both bays. Now, what really impresses me about a charger like this is not so much just that stuff. That stuff is pretty standard fare, being able to select current, being able to see the percentage, the milliamps, all that stuff's pretty standard. What I like is there's a couple features I don't normally see. You can double tap the mode button here, tap, tap, and you wait, and then it flashes right here. Now, when I tap again, you see I can change the chemistry. I can tell it that I have lithium iron phosphate batteries in here. Let me click it again. Let me click again. I can also tell it that I have lithium ion high voltage, which is the 4.35 voltage batteries. There's also capacity testing and discharge modes. So let's say you want to change, let's say you want to charge the capacity of your battery. So let's throw it in a bay here. And what you're going to do is both buttons here, you're going to click them and hold them for two seconds. Now it goes to test. And while we're on test, it's going to analyze for a moment, and then it's going to start charging and discharging this battery. Now it'll do a true test, meaning that it'll charge all the way to full and discharge and then report how many milliamp hours it got out of the battery and how long it took. So if you want to enter discharge mode, what you do is you press and hold both of these for over two seconds again. And when it flashes test, click the mode button once and it'll switch over to discharge. And now it'll discharge the battery at half an amp. If that UI sounds complicated, don't worry. They gave you a pretty darn good little booklet here with really good instructions on how to do all of that stuff I just went over. So what I like to do is take the booklet and just set it under the charger wherever it lives. And that way, when I stumble or forget how to do something, my booklet is right there. All right, so the feature set looks great. Let's do a test. I'm gonna throw this battery in here. I'm gonna charge it at two amps. And let's come back and see what the voltage topped out at. Let's take the cell out. It reads 4.2 volts. And check it on my digital multimeter. Okay, so there's my digital multimeter. Let's take the cell out and see what it reads. 4.19, that is an excellent charge. All right, final thoughts. What do I think about this EBL PD4 IntelliCharger? I think it's excellent for the price. Remember, this thing is around $20. And for $20, you're getting a really good display. A display I honestly like more than the VC4 Plus's display. You can see even on its brightest, it's kind of dim under my video lighting. Now, it's not normally a problem when I don't have video lights on, but it just does show that these displays are easier to read and clearer under bright light, sunlight, things like that. And this is backlit for nighttime. And then after an amount of time, the backlight turns out and it becomes pretty much pitch black. So if I got this charging on a nightstand near me while I sleep, it's not gonna bother me. One of the things about the VC4 Plus I've been noticing is even if you press and hold to make the display dark, it's still on. All these green lights down here are on and there's a faint glow here and actually it's been bothering me. So I'm gonna take this one away from my nightstand and start using the EBL instead. So my one line summary would be, if you want a feature packed charger for the lowest cost possible, this EBL PD4 should be on your radar. Go check it out on the Amazon link I have in the video description. All right guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.